So I believe there are no coincidences in life. Everything in life happens for a reason. There's a reason why I'm talking to you today. Anyone could be seated here today, but it's you. And when there's no logical explanation to this reason of coincidence, I call it a miracle. So a few years ago, when I got out of college, I happened to encounter a miracle, which today I it changed my life. So I was seeking the purpose of my life, like many of you all, and I happened to meet this celebrity in her car out of nowhere. And I spoke to her many things, and I asked her many questions. To which she said something very powerful to me. She said, "Anyone can be anything that they want to be. The world is your oyster. Just have the courage to follow your heart, and remember, it's okay to be wrong." Wow, these words just summed up life to me. Not that I found a purpose to my life, but I definitely got a direction to my journey. So I took all the paths. I followed my heart everywhere, right or wrong. I don't know. All I knew, I had the courage to follow my heart. So what is right? What is wrong? We've been taught since childhood that we have to be right in everything. Right school, right college, right career, right life partner. But what is right? What is wrong? For example, if I have a cup, an empty cup, and I'm pouring a freshly brewed coffee in the cup. till your everything is right the cup is full everything is right and i still go on pouring coffee in the cup now the cup is overflowing and suddenly i am wrong how can the same act of pouring coffee in the cup 5 seconds ago sound right and suddenly this is wrong it's because right and wrong is not so fixed life is not a grocery store where everything is labeled and you know exactly what is what life is not so fixed guys what is right today may be wrong tomorrow or what is wrong today may look right tomorrow so let me give you an example suddenly right now when i'm talking the lights go off there's a panic you won't be able to hear me there you will become restless you will impatiently wait for the lights to turn on So I assume someone at the back end will go and switch on the generator set, and then you will come back to your normal senses. What happened in the blackout? Anything measurable? Nothing. But you just lost a small piece of your mind. But hold on. Everyone here uses a mobile phone, right? Of course, a wrong question to ask. And I'm sure you all are aware that these mobile towers facilitate. the connectivity to your mobile phones and they also run on a generator set just imagine if these stop working trust me you all will go mad you all will not be able to access your instagram stories or post a snap on a snapchat or for that matter even whatsapp anyone trust me guys generator sets these mobile towers are your life right now so say thank you to them what i'll tell you another example since india is a progressing country you all know wherever you step out of the country some infrastructure work is going on somewhere roads bridges metros railways are constructed somewhere malls are being set up industries are being built have you all ever visited these sites of construction or have you all ever wondered from where do these sites of construction avail electricity again there are these huge generator set and heavy barrels which are kept which facilitate the electricity to these sites now the electricity supply to these sites if they stop the work stops and india runs on such work the growth of india will definitely slow down hold on imagine all the servers in an it industry shut down or for that matter industries stop working they come to a standstill what happens guys the loss there even for a minute of power cut is in billions you all can't imagine now let me take you to the last example of a power cut imagine in a hospital if there is a power cut the loss that happens here is irreplaceable you cannot replace lives so you all must be wondering why am i talking about blackouts and generator sets and everything hold on i just told you all life is not so fixed So 
when you saw all these generator sets working everywhere do you all know there's one common fuel that goes into them anyone exactly it's diesel so diesel normally what we conceive it as it is a fuel for the cars no very few of us know where all the millions of barrels of liters of diesel are used in the country india imports fuel out of that 3% is petrol and rest 97% is diesel now india runs on diesel india is the third largest consumer of diesel in the world after us and china today as i stand here and speak we import roughly about 90 billion liters of diesel every year and of course it's going to be increase every day by 2030 it's assumed we'll be the number one diesel consumer in the world with about 150 billion liters of diesel every year heavy right let me break it down to one day you know how much diesel we consume in one day we consume about 250 million liters of diesel per day surprised let me tell you a more surprising fact that our cars use only 15% of the diesel what so where does the rest 85% go as you can see 4% is used by industries 5% by your hospitals malls your buildings 6% by infrastructure 38 by transporters commercial agriculture mobile cars and etc only 40 15% is used by the private cars so these 15% might eventually go down in the coming years but the rest 85 will continue to rise you know why because all these sectors constitute to india's growth so now have you all ever wondered all the other sectors how do they procure diesel it's not as easy as sending your vehicle to the petrol pump so how do they procure diesel almost everywhere there is a procurement in charge he has to find a vehicle he has to load it with empty barrels he has to take it to the nearest petrol pump or the fuel station fill it with diesel come back again to the site unload the barrels unload the diesel in the generator set switch it on and then use such a tedious process i mean multiply this for every time there's a diesel consumption need and multiply this across the nation now what happens is while doing all these things there are a lot of problems that are occurred the biggest problem here is not safety or the biggest problem is not any losses the biggest problem here is we lose diesel all these irregularities are prone to losses they are prone to dead mileage all these vehicles going to the petrol pump coming back getting diesel to you know burning diesel to just get diesel it's insane secondly there is lot of spillage that happens here while unloading loading there's lot of theft that occurs here quality and quantity of diesel is largely compromised unproductive time unproductive manpower everything is at stake and safety you, you all can see the safety matters so in all these processes unwanted processes what i call it it's ridiculous that we lose 25 million liters of diesel every day which is equal to a loss of 700 billion rupees every year that's huge so if we were to find a solution to this if we were to find a solution to reduce the dead mileage reduce the loss reduce the diesel loss reduce the money reduce everything what what the solution would look like so if i were to find a solution here the solution would somewhat look like this so what does this look like to you is it a tanker a vehicle no it's it's much bigger than that it's much much more than that this is a dream this is also no less than a miracle and this will change the way fuel will be distributed in india so ladies and gentlemen this is a new mobile petrol pump exclusively for diesel but it is also known as refueler in the technical language so what happens how do you get how do you, how does it work so there's a mobile application you order diesel you track your vehicle you track track your quality you track your quantity of consumption because every drop of diesel that is dispensed from your counts secondly there is no spillage dead mileage is reduced and most important diesel is not a luxury product we don't say hey come on let's order diesel today it's an emergency product 
So this mobile application also helps you track the quantity of diesel that's left in your generator set so that you're always future ready. It's as simple as that. Click get diesel on app and relax. I told you guys, it's no less than a miracle. All thanks to the internet of things. So, is it safe? Is this all legal in India? Let me give you a very, very vivid description on safety. Petrol and diesel are two different fuels. Petrol comes under class A petroleum product because it catches fire immediately. And diesel comes in class B petroleum product because it doesn't catch fire immediately. As simple as that. Also, this vehicle is also used in refueling your aircrafts at the airport. So, safety is still the concern. And these vehicles are special purpose vehicles. It's only manufactured by license holder and under the stringent rules of Petroleum and Explosive Safety Organization. Also, this vehicle, is, trust me guys, will change the way India will see the petroleum sector. It will cut down our diesel bills, it will protect our forex, it will create humongous employment and most important, it will restore the peace of mind. So, you all must be wondering, when everyone is talking about green, what a young lady here is talking about diesel. Guys, green is the new tomorrow. Today, we have diesel. And just because it creates pollution, we cannot avoid it. In fact, we should use this sustainably to make sure we, you know, welcome the green tomorrow with clean hands. So, am I the only face behind this incredible idea and the execution? The answer is no. He is the one too. And he also happens to be my husband. So, from where did this, we get this idea? How did it happen? What we believe is, you don't find an idea. An idea happens to you. And an idea only happens to you when you're ready. And, it went, and when it happened to us, we relentlessly executed it. So, everyone keeps on asking us, then since you all both work for 18 hours a day, how do you all manage to find a balance between your personal and your professional life? First of all, we are not married only at a husband and wife level. We are married to a purpose. We are married to a vision that is larger than us. And second of all, there isn't any personal and professional life. There is just life. and There's no this and that. So amongst all this, there's a very important thing that I learned. That when you put all your mind, body, emotions and energy into something that you really want, the universe works for you. But there's only one rule. Your intention behind the desire has to be very pure. So amidst all this, when everyone told us this is not going to work, don't go for it, we didn't stop. We believed and worked for it as if our life depended on it. So what happened? Nothing much. We met the petroleum minister. We are a part of the task force of the Ministry of Commerce to formulate the policy for this new business model. Also, the government has announced a pilot projects across India and execution has begun in India. All thanks to the universe. That's what I believe in. So amidst all this journey, I'll tell you a very beautiful coincidence that happened with me. I had studied about this magnificent personality since I was a kid. And I never knew that one day he will be interested in our work. So yes, last year we met Mr. Ratan Tata at his house and all I had were tears of joy and goosebumps. He gave us so many vital inputs on how we should go ahead. Trust me guys, we were blown away by his humility. This meeting gave a new direction to our journey. Now, I am in my 20s and this is the beginning of my journey. But there is a very important lesson that I have learned. That when I want to build an external world, the first thing I need to do is build this internal world. If I have a vision that is larger than my life, I should know myself first. I should be stable enough to handle people. I should be stable enough to lead thousands of people. So I firmly believe the only way out is from inside. So. Did I finally find the purpose of my life? I don't know. But I don't think about it. And this question 
never comes to my mind one man can change the world is such an overused quote but i leave you today with this belief that one day it will read that one woman can change the world thank you